Hello, friends and adventurers, and welcome back to Sally Cat Plays Exile 3 Ruined World. I do have a fair bit left to explore northwards, but today. I'm heading straight into a golem ambush. Great. After I deal with this, I need to head back southwards to find the city of Gale. Okay, that didn't go that didn't go too badly, except Amethyst did get some acid spit on her. Okay, as far as I can tell, acid does not damage the defense value of my armor. At least not for Mithril, which is very good, because that is hard to get. So I have a basic necklace. Does anyone have basic powder? No, I just have the cleansing powder, which does no good for acid. So, back across this bridge, investigate this spot. The Empire Army had a small fort here. It didn't last long in the face of golem fireball barrages. There isn't much left. Hmm. A wall. This is a long, massive stone wall, constructed to keep the lands of the south safe from golem attack. Unfortunately, the wall is nowhere near wide enough yet. The golems can simply walk around it. It's basically worthless. This open area was once a lush expanse of farmland dotted with farms and guard posts. Piles of freshly cut lumber, from the logging camps to the north, would be stacked everywhere, waiting to be shipped out. Now. The attacks of the golems and raids from renegade soldiers have devastated the area. Only small, isolated patches of farmland remain. Most of the farms have been abandoned or burned out. And only the city of Gale seems anywhere near intact. Yeah, that doesn't seem like a very effective wall there. Interesting bit of forest. Potentially interesting, anyway. What's that? Sally Cat getting distracted by exploring something she doesn't need to explore right now? <laughs> Never. And some squares of trees are just totally impenetrable. And here we find areas that I have explored already. Yay. Oh no, the golems have caught up to me. Now, is this Empire soldier going to be friendly or not? A patrol of Empire soldiers, marching close together with weapons at the ready, comes near you. When they see you aren't golems, however, you cease to be interesting to them. They march off without a word. Fine by me. Okay, seems to be a little split off bit of land there. Appleton to the west, Myrnia northeast, and Gale northeast. The only place we haven't been of those is Gale. You find the entrance to a small, abandoned mine. The ground has been scorched and scarred by a variety of dangerous spells. The miners must have left after being attacked by some powerful, magic-using creatures. There's nothing stopping you from going in and having a look around. Do you? Eh, maybe. This sounds like the place where I first found the golems. Also, who's got my regeneration rings? Because I think Amethyst needs one now. Uh. 
you search the mine and find it pleasantly devoid of nasty monsters. It's also been mostly cleaned out, although you do find a cart of gold ore that got left behind when the miners fled. You help yourself. Ye. Uh, will we find anything valuable in this one? You move down into the mine, only to find the main entrance was sealed off only a hundred feet in. You move back out, only to find you've walked into a golem ambush. The animated, lethal statues are waiting for you at the entrance. Great. At least there's no jeweled golems this time. Okay, how the flaming sword is effective on the fire golems, I'm not entirely certain. But okay then. And perhaps time for another rest. Nothing else particularly interesting on that map square. Except perhaps some more golems. You meet a group of faceless, lethal-looking statues, moving quickly and smoothly through the brush. They attack everything living they see, be it plants, animals, or you. One would think the trees at least would slow them down a little bit. Interesting, not all the golems drop golem gems. Maybe just the elemental ones? Also, the golems seem to have had it out for bits of the road here. Oh, come on. Another sign telling me where the nearby cities are. You approach the City of Gale's massive, closed steel gates. Used to the open gates of Valorum's other cities, you stand patiently, waiting for them to open and let you into the grim streets beyond. You wait to no avail. After a few minutes, a guard walks up to the gate, laughs at you, and says, <laughs> Go away. The city is closed to visitors. Go elsewhere. Then he walks away, leaving you stuck outside. Okay, then. Gale West Gate. This gate is closed. Enter at North Side Gate. City walls just a little bit dinged up. To enter, look to the northeast corner. Hmm. Well, here's the north gate, and it's not letting me in. And the guards, of course, don't respond to me. What's this? North Side Gate! Temporarily closed. You walk up to the small side gate, placed here for foot traffic to enter the city quickly. However, the gate is locked tight. The guards on the other side laugh and spit at you. You can't get in this way. Aw, oh, come on! I've dealt with four plagues now. Even if two of them really counted as one, or at least had the same solution. Oh, here's a person standing outside. I will come right back to you. Because, of course, I need to complete my perimeter check and leave the horses somewhere that I'll remember them. Outside of town. You find a small, wiry man standing and waiting outside the city walls. You only notice him when you get close to him. It's like he has some sort of weak concealment spell. I hope it's good enough to protect him from getting spotted by golems. I am Posse. Well, these days, it is difficult to enter Gale. I give assistance in doing so to those in need. A difficult place to live these days, to say the least. Posse thinks. I hear a lot of what goes on. I heard what you accomplished to the south. I'll take the risk of letting you in. Though if the mayor finds out I helped in exile, I'll be in mortal danger. He points to the nearby trees. The passage in is through there. Be wary around City Hall. Good luck to you. Okay, so apparently we need to solve at least one plague before being granted entry into Gale. You find a dark tunnel leading down into the ground. Crawl down it. We emerge in a storeroom. 
with barrels of scribane herb. I'm betting that despite having all the city gates closed, Gale still has a whole bunch of smugglers. A large woman with a blank face is sitting at the table. She isn't drinking or eating or talking with anyone. She just sits at an empty table, waiting. I am Alba. Just waiting. You don't know what for? I have nothing to speak to you about. Mm hmm. Hey, barkeep, how much can you tell us about what's going on here? The innkeeper gives you a knowing wink when you approach the bar. She seems to know how you entered Gale, and how illegal your presence here is. Well, considering she's got the storeroom with the secret passage in it, I would hope she knows about that. I'm Langley. How may I help you? Well, I would be honored if you would stay in one of our luxury rooms. Only twenty gold for such, well, intriguing guests. In addition, for such as yourselves, we have a variety of unusual services. She points at a woman sitting in the corner. If you're here for medicine, she will help you out. Very reasonable prices. If you're selling goods you may have obtained somehow, I pay excellent rates. Oh yeah, do I have things I need to sell? Well, at least a couple. No drinks, then. <laughs> Annoyed, she leans close and lowers her voice. Careful! That stuff is still illegal, and Mayor Raleigh will have our heads on a stick if it pleases her. You want the stuff? Ask Alba over there about medicine. Don't talk to me about it anymore. In fact, just get away. Okay, then. I'll just unload some of my extra stuff, then. Really should sell off those golem gems. I've got 43 pounds worth of them. And I could sell my scribbing herb here, even though it is surely the illegal drug being passed off as medicine. Oh, hey. A bleary-eyed man sits behind the counter, surrounded by neat packages of rations. He doesn't even bother to conceal the bottle of green liquid he's been drinking. Uh, I'm Mario. He takes a sip from the vial. Uh, uh, I have food. He seems annoyed that you're distracting him. Yes, you can purchase it and leave. I can buy crude rations, but I don't need food for quite a while after reading Castle Troglo. So what the heck, let's ask Alba about this medicine she's trading in. She smiles. Yes, I just sit here and they come to me. Welcome. Have a seat. You sit. Now, you're interested in a little scribbane? Only the best. Brought at great difficulty and expense from the Isle of Begail to here. You can purchase some from me. The effects are extraordinary. Everyone in town uses it. Or if not everyone yet, soon. Just the thing to relieve the fear of the golems. It's especially good for soldiers and adventurers. Doubles your strength. Erases your fear. Makes you fight like tigers. A whole city cannot be wrong. Just the edge you'll need dodging golems is just one purchase away. Okay, so that's like, what, fantasy crystal meth? We can indeed buy Scribbane Herb here. And there's those luxury rooms. You walk out onto the streets of Gale for the first time. It's the most unpleasant city you've seen in Valorum so far. A thick, smoky haze hangs over the streets, and the roads and buildings have been scarred by fireball bombardments. That smoky haze could be fumes from people smoking scribane herb, or it uh, could be smoke from all of the bombed-out buildings. 
As is usual for Valorum, alert guards are everywhere. However, they seem more interested in watching the townspeople than anything else. The people are quiet and nervous, cowed by the guards around them. Many of the people have glazed expressions on their faces. They stumble down the street, seemingly unsure of where they are or where they're going. The air smells of decay, of sulfur, and of something you don't recognize. Yeah, that'd be the weed, I mean, Scrubane. The Gale Arms. Hello? I'm not sure how much of the inner city wall I will actually be able to explore. The door is locked. You are on a stairway leading up to the ramparts of the city. Okay, I guess I will be able to explore all of this then. Yay. There's an archer. A Gale townsperson walks up to you, face wearing a predatory grin. You know, Mayor Raleigh would reward me well if I were to let him know that exiles were in the city. Reward me very well indeed. Of course, for a mild payment, I could neglect my sacred duty to my city and just keep silent. Seems a small price to pay to avoid trouble, eh? Do you pay? Probably better do it. You pay the parasite the demanded gold. The townsperson graces you with a mocking smile and wanders off. Aha! So it would perhaps be wise to not try talking to too many random townsfolk. But this guy's a beggar, so he probably has something interesting to tell me. A beggar runs up to you, drops nimbly to his knees, and raises his bowl. His fingers have light green stains, and his eyes are glazed over. Thank you for being so kind as to ask. I am Galad, kind adventurers. I've heard of you. You are great and bold. It is an incredible honor to meet you. And, if you would be so kind as to give me some gold, maybe I can aid you. He takes ten of your gold. Thank you so much. And for one hundred gold more, I can tell you something very interesting about the golems. He takes the money gratefully. In the herb house there's a mage. She's always there. Always not quite awake. She mumbles. And sometimes she mumbles about golems. Prod her about it, and you might find something good. Okay, then. You find a hideously grisly sight. A Nephilim has been hung from this tree. The still body hangs there, its feet two feet from the ground. It was a pathetic, bedraggled creature, missing much fur and many teeth. It looks even worse now. A sign hanging around its neck gives a clue of why the poor creature was slain. It simply says, Gale will not tolerate parasites or filthy kitties. Oh dear. Gale, I think that poor starving Nephilim are the least of your worries right now. Invasion, I mean adventurer inspection. You find a small skiff at the end of the dock. Looking south across the water, you can see a shadowy, mysterious island. However, sailors are everywhere. You won't be able to steal the skiff. You'll have to find its owner. Hmm. Sailors in. Vacancy. 
and a living Nephilim. You meet a Nephilim male. He wears an earring and a sword hanging at his belt. He watches you nervously as you approach. I am... He looks around, alert and on edge. I am a sailor, stranded in this town. I came here serving on a ship, but now the ship won't leave because there is nowhere for it to go. So instead, I bought a skiff with my savings. He shakes his head and makes a hissing noise. It was good for nothing. The leaky thing could only get to the island to the south. That is useless to me. The island to the south is overrun by undead, and may well always be. I wish to get rid of the worthless boat, if possible. His ears perk up. I would let you purchase this gift for only one hundred gold. If you were odd enough to want to see the undead island, that is. Well, I'm probably not going to follow up on that right away, but it's cheap, and... Undead islands usually are full of interesting things for adventurers. He takes your gold gratefully. The skiff is at the end of the central dock. Thank you much. Happy to help, sir. The innkeeper here wears a hefty greatsword at his belt, and seems prepared to leap over the bar and break up a fight, or fight a golem at any moment. He has a variety of scars. I'm Cole, the innkeeper here. Bourbon is eight gold for a round. A room for the night is five. And don't bug the customers. We keep to ourselves here. Remember that. Well, let's go for some bourbon. The drink is neither strong nor good. As you choke it down, G Cole says, By the way, you should be careful in Gale. Mayor Raleigh is losing it. Sealed off the city. Talking about the golems is asking for trouble. He's jealous of anyone who can fight them, and resents anyone talking about them because it points out how little good he's done against them. You're lucky. Wouldn't tell this to just anyone. Everyone who comes through that door has another story about what the exiles are doing to fight the monsters. Now if you ask me, the person you should talk to is the general. Go up to Tavrono. You'll see who I mean. Tavrono being a city to the north that we haven't found just yet. Temple of the Shining Beacon. Nice large temple. You meet a middle-aged priest. He's a massive man, moving comfortably in his armor with a great mace hanging from his belt. However, it's plain to see weariness is eating away at him, bit by bit. I am simply called Zachariah. Welcome to my sanctuary. It is good to see fresh, bold faces in this battered town. I will give you assistance however I am able. However, I am afraid I am growing rather tired. This town fights two wars, one from without, one from within. Golems attack our bodies, and Scribanerb attacks our souls. They do to us what the giants do to Lorelei. They rush in, throw spells at us, and run back. Every day we grow weaker. Only one town has had luck fighting them. There is a force up in Tevrono, a town to the north, that has had much success against the golems. However, they stand alone. Our mayor refuses to support them. If you wish to battle the golems, you should go up there and see what they're doing right. I am an accomplished healer. I can also make a variety of spells available to you. Ooh, yes, please. So, some pretty good stuff, which I have probably already gotten from the temple back in the Tower of Magi, back when that existed. Isn't it wonderful that we have a secondary place to pick all those spells up? Yep, got all of those already. Oh, my poor flock. They are subjected to constant danger and fear. Then these men and women come, and offer them a strange new way to completely escape the horror of their lives, and they leap at it. It is only then that they find out the true price. Once you ingest Scribane Herb, it starts to seize control of your soul. 
The more you take, the less good it does you, but the more you need it. I tell you, it is as implacable and lethal a foe as the golems ever were. Hmm, looks like a confessional. Do I want to invade the privacy of the church? Temple, whatever. Okay, yeah, that's just the priest's bedroom. And this looks like a blacksmith. You find a vacant, bleary-eyed man, holding sway over a dusty and disused forge. When you enter, he makes a clumsy effort to look professional. I am Weapon Master Asp, he mumbles. Presumably no relation to the Asp back down in Exile or Upper Exile. I forget if. I think Asp shows up in New Kotra, but I'd have to check on that. You can purchase from my stock, and I do improvements, he mumbles. A tiny bit of drool forms at the corner of his mouth. Well, his prices are average, his stock is iron and steel. Not bad, not the best, but not bad. He grabs a hammer and gives it a few practice swings. You can see that not all of the skill has drained out of him. I've lost a bit lately, but I can still make a blade sharp enough to cut steel. If you want something augmented, let me know. Okay, who's got non-magic weapons? Huh. I don't remember what the augmentation here is. Plus three. Okay, then. So I can totally co- Hmm. So augmenting weapons here may be a good idea. I was pretty sure there's a way to get flaming weapons, but I don't remember where. Gale Armorsmith. Man, everybody keeps locking their bedroom doors. The proprietor of this shop is proudly polishing a beautifully made steel helmet. He holds it up to let it gleam in the light. Then he turns to you. I'm Darus, Armorsmith of Gale, he says proudly. Even in these troubled times, Gale's armor is still some of the finest in the world. Surprisingly, I still have some items in stock which you can purchase if you have sufficient money and taste. With all the horror and carnage these days, I am forced to concentrate twice as hard on making the best armor I possibly can. Unfortunately, that means I don't follow too much what's going on, he thinks. Beyond, of course, how much people need armor. Probably not a bad strategy for you, sir. So yeah, pretty decent armor here. Nothing I want. And just a couple destroyed buildings in this town. And yeah, maybe I know why people are locking all their doors. They don't want anyone finding or stealing their su supply of scribane. You don't see anything, random townsperson. As you start to step through the door, you notice the floor on the other side looks slightly suspicious. Yeah, I'm going to not deal with that. Heh, <laughs> I could shut the townsperson up in this room. Okay, just another... S just another storehouse, warehouse kind of thing. This feels suspicious. 
you would just bet that the floor ahead has a trap of some sort. Mm hmm. So we've got a gold bar, a ring, and more scribane herb, none of which I'm going to steal. You saw nothing? City Hall. I see everything here is in fine shape. Gale Library. Temporarily closed. Oh no. This door has been sealed off. Metal bars block it shut. A sign nailed to the door reads, Library closed until further notice. You note the door has no keyhole. A key would do you no good here. No! Don't keep me out of the library! <coughs> Hall of the Mayor. A hunched-over old man with a mayor's sash sits at the table, poring over some records. When you get close, his head snaps up. He seems very annoyed at the interruption. Who let you in here? He snaps. I have enough problems without being pestered by scurvy bands of adventurers. Be off with you. He looks at his papers and ignores you. Okay, respectably large barracks. A locked door, which I cannot seem to be able to unlock. You approach Leona, the garrison commander of Gale. A pair of sharp, cruel eyes swing up to look you over. She analyzes you carefully, thinking something over. Then she looks back down at her desk. So you finally arrived, she says. Your help is not welcome here. You are unnecessary at best, a nuisance at worst. I suggest you leave town before misfortune befalls you. And that's all she has to say to you. Okay then. Town leadership does not like me. <coughs> this man quickly stuffs a package in his pocket when you approach. He bows to you. I am Master Kalen. Greetings to you. His face twitches suddenly. He looks pained. He still manages to talk. I am the trainer for Gale. Would you like knowledge? Perhaps in a bit. His hand falls unconsciously to rest on his pocket. Pardon me, I just have a headache. They happen. It's just a little bit of withdrawal. <coughs> this shop is run by a grim, pale woman. She sits at her counter, sharpening a small, finely made throwing knife. She says simply, Stern. She continues to work on the knife. I'm the Fletcher for Gale. I have fine missiles here. She shakes her head. I don't talk politics, and I don't want herb if that's what you're asking about. If everyone in this cursed city wants to hammer their brains into mush with that stuff, that's their business. Beyond my control. I just make missiles. Well, here's a source of iron bolts, I guess. Hmm. That looks suspiciously like a long hidden passage. Velnas the mage. This woman is clearly a mage. However, 
You aren't sure how much you should trust her. She seems constantly distracted, and her eyes look glazed over. I am... I... I am Velnus. She thinks. Excuse my distraction. I am a bit tired. I am Gale's mage. I teach spells, and do other services. She concentrates. Well, I can... I can identify items. And you can sell them to me, too. I get I... I get items to sell to others. Yes, that's right. Hmm. Hmm. She pulls out a spell book and looks it over. Some of the spells seem to confuse her, but after a bit, she finds a few she seems comfortable with. You can purchase spells from me. Would you like that? Well, I probably already have. Ooh, she sells Identify. Wow. Already have that one. But it's cool to find out that you can actually buy that instead of getting it through theft. <laughs> hmm. Apparently I did not have weak summoning already. Yeah, these are all pretty low-level spells. Though Identify is not one of the ones you get by default. Nantier, Alchemist. You meet Gale's Alchemist. He looks at you skeptically. I am Nantier. He says tiredly, I don't make herb. I don't have herb. I am a simple alchemist. I don't know anything about that Scribane herb stuff beyond that everyone asks for it and I don't have it. If that's what you want, I'll have to bid you good day. Okay then. I teach alchemical recipes. If you would like to purchase one, that's something I can do for you. Be sure to ask about the needed ingredients. I could do it a lot better if I could enter the library. Still, we all do what we can. To make strong poison, you need holly and worm grass. To make a strong healing potion, you need gray mold and comfrey root. He thinks. By the way, will you be traveling Minoro province much? You're in Minoro province now. If you want a map, Head north to the town of Tavrono. My friend Osmo is a mapmaker. He's stuck there. Talk to him, and he can help you find your way around. Good to know. Gale has a small but very high-quality library in City Hall. Unfortunately, the librarian died, and our esteemed mayor closed it for good. He thinks. I heard one woman say she knows how to enter it, but I will have no dealings with her. She has a shop, where she sells that cursed herb stuff. I'm not sure where it is. She told me she knows something of the library. I want to get into it, but I wouldn't go near her place of business for the world. Hmm. I wonder if her place of business has anything to do with this empty corner here. Oh no, a dead end. Oh ho? You enter a grim, smoky room, filled with the bitter smell of stale sweat. Twitching, vacant souls loll about on filthy beds, taking long sips from vials of bitter green fluid. It's a grim, dark place. You meet the woman who runs this grim place. She moves smoothly up to you and bows. She grimaces. I prefer not to say my name. I'm sure you understand. Why, I sell refuge. Or strength. Both come from the same miraculous source, Scribane Herb. Brought at great risk from the Isle of Begale, Scribane Herb will increase your strength, both of mind and body. Take it before battle, and you will be nearly invincible. Take it when you are afraid, or tired, and feel true restoration of your soul. Such a miracle can only be purchased here. She smiles and bats her eyelashes. Do you wish to obtain some? Oh, I believe she actually sells Scribane Herb more cheaply than the woman in the inn. Are you the one who knows a little more about the library and getting access, and getting access to it? She thinks. 
Oh, yes. The librarian of Gale came here often. She traded a key to the library for some herb. You can have ownership of it, for only a thousand gold. It does me no good. Oh dear, that sounds like she was quite desperate to get her fix. She takes your gold and hands you a key made of electrum. Poor soul. She was slain by a golem's fireball, not long after she sold this to me. Oh well. Okay. Now what you might not think of at first glance is that I can talk to these people... Well, I can try talking to these people lying in bed. This person is incoherent. But in the corner here is Rosalie. You find a mage of the Empire, decayed to a horrifying extent. She lies back on the filthy bed, the corners of her mouth crusted with herbal potion. She mumbles incoherently. Somehow, she manages to hear you. I am Rosalie. She mumbles. Oh, Edward. Oh, oh, Edward. Her eyes open wide. Edward? I thought they had you. Have you come back to me? Have you returned? She suddenly starts to cry. She stares in your direction, but doesn't see you. You cannot fool me. My Edward was slain. He is gone. Go away and leave me to a little poor peace I can find. She turns spasmodically away. Mm -hmm. I heard you can tell me something good about golems? Her eyes open wide. She struggles desperately to attain a few moments of coherence. Yes. Yes. Before Edward left me, I had to tell people. I met a mage in mountains north of here, southeast of Tavrono. Must fly to get there. With a final exertion of energy, she says, Go to him. Met him. Knows golems. Then she sinks back, exhausted. Well now, that sounds very interesting indeed. North of here and southeast of Tavrono. So we have an Electrum key. You purchased this key in the city of Gale. It will, supposedly, let you into the library there. Supposedly, because remember, there's no keyhole on the library door. So I might have to try finding an alternate way in. I was getting a little concerned there. You find a stout oaken door with a small keyhole. Fortunately, your Electrum key fits. You will unlock the door. Yay! Behold the Gale Library! You find a book about a great hero named Pactar. The last of his great deeds was to try to wipe out a nest of drakes on a small island just east of the Isle of Begale. In this assault, he was slain, and his body was lost. The book gives directions to the drake lair, at the north end of the small island. It also mentions that his legendarily powerful armor, the Plate of Pactar, was lost in this dungeon. Ooh. Sounds like a new place to take a field trip soon. Uh, find a book about a great hero named Pactar. Hmm. Weird that one shelf tells me about Pactar and one shelf tells me more about Pactar and where he died. You carefully decode a book on alchemy. It's a recipe for a powerful poison made out of mandrake root. You can now make killer poison. You have the good fortune of finding an old spellbook on one of the higher shelves. There's only one spell in it of interest to you, but you read it carefully. You can now cast Anti-Magic Cloud. Sort of cool. Obviously can't get through there. Ooh, what's in here and how would I get in there? Hmm, 
don't mind me just sneaking around a little bit. <laughs> you hear a grating, disembodied voice. It says, You are not authorized to go forward. Turn back, or you will face overwhelming, deadly force. Okay, so that is either the mayor's personal quarters and or the town treasury. And with that, I've explored basically all of the city of Gale. And I think I'm going to have to take the same way out that I took in. You find a dark tunnel leading down into the ground. Crawl down it. And back out we come. So next time, I think we need to find the city of Tevrono somewhere north of here. Until then, have a good one, everybody.